One of the things that we get asked for most frequently is solid, secure, locking coupe doors. Well, today we're looking at a new unit from Chicken Guard that does that and a whole lot more. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. Welcome to the chicken enclosure. My name's Hugh, and together with Fiona the Chicken Whisperer, we run a small holding here in rural Lincolnshire where we breed lots and lots of floofy rare breed chickens. We take the security of our flock very seriously. We've got an elaborate electric fence set up, enclosing all the area where they free range. We have auto openers and closers on all our coops. And we think that gives us a pretty good measure of protection. We haven't lost a bird in well over a decade. But our American friends have said to us, look, we've got different problems, different predators than you. We've got the trash panda, the raccoon, with little paws that can sneak in and lift pop hole doors. And we really want a locking pop hole door. So when our friends at Chicken Guard reached out to us recently, said we've got an innovative new product, we'd like to send you to review. And we found out that it includes a metal geared locking pop hole door. We thought some of our subscribers would really like to know about that. Not only that, it's got some other innovative features. For example, this control panel can be moved well away from the pop hole and actually put, for example, over here. Why does that matter? Well, if you've got a run on your coop, you don't want to have to get down on your hands and knees and crawl through the run in order to operate the auto opener and closer. And with this unit, you don't have to. So let's take a look at how we installed it, what we think of it, what we like, and anything we think could be improved. Fitting the unit, like a lot of these units these days, is honestly no trouble at all. It's four big screws to fit the unit. And I would advise you, take your time, just be careful, use a pencil, mark the locations, use a drill, and there are some very big, very long, heavy duty screws provided. Word of caution there, on a very thin, lightweight wooden coupe, some of the commercial coupes you buy are, they may be too big and you may be better off getting some slightly smaller, shorter, stainless steel screws for some of the fittings so that you don't either split the wood or come through the inside. Once you've actually got the unit in place, fitting the batteries is very simple. And once you've fitted the batteries and closed that up, the unit will automatically go into a mode, a sort of setup wizard where you can configure how you want it to work. Fiona and I have tested so many of these units now that we basically got almost like a checklist of things that we think they should be able to have. First things first, as you configure them, you should have at least three options for opening and closing. And those options should be open at a particular time of day, open when it gets to dawn, or open when I press a button to let the chickens out. And you should have the same options for close. And perhaps almost most importantly, you should be able to mix and match between those options. So either you can say, I don't want my chickens let out at dawn because at certain times of the year, that's going to be four o'clock in the morning and my cockerel's going to wake my neighbors up. But I always want it to close at dusk. I don't want it to shut them out because the nights have got a bit longer and I've got it configured to time. So you should be able to, and that's how we have our set usually is open at a certain time of day, particularly if there's a cockerel in that coop, but always close at dusk. The other thing you should have is a manual override. So that if you come out and it's set to close at dusk, but all your chickens have already gone to bed, you should be able to press a button on the unit, it should close the doors and you should be able to go in knowing that your chickens are safely locked up for the night. Suffice it to say, this unit does have all of those functions, which is great. The all-in-one unit has got a feature which is almost unique in automatic doors, certainly unique as far as I know in up and down automatic doors, although the Omelette Auto door does have something similar. And that is that you can move the control unit away from the pop hole. And um, in the case of the all-in-one, the control unit that's actually installed can be unscrewed from the front of the unit and unplugged. And then Chicken Guard supply a second housing for it. So you can put that second housing somewhere different and put the control unit in that, connect the two parts up with a cable. That is so, so useful because if, for example, you have a run on the front of your coop, how do you press the buttons? Because the run's in the way of your hands. 
And if you want to press the button, so for example, well, we've got a broody hen who's just hatched. We don't like the door to open in the morning until we're around that we can keep an eye on and make sure no chicks get trapped out in the run. So we'll set it to manual, but that tends to mean we have to sort of crawl into the run to open the unit in the morning. With the all-in-one unit, you can set the unit up outside the run and control the pop hole from there, which is fantastic, really convenient. That also has some great advantages if, for example, you're going to have your coop in a big flock down run, because potentially you can control the opening and closing of the coop without ever having to set foot in your large flock down run. And the cable is a standard RJ45 computer cable, so you can get them to be as long as you want. Right, let's tell you what I'm keen on with this unit. And there are a number of things. Now, the first one is going to seem basic to you, but I promise you it's not basic to me. Batteries. Okay. I hate it when you need screwdrivers, little fiddly non-captive screws to change the batteries because the batteries go in the dark, in the cold, in the rain, while my tea's on the table. It's just, it's never convenient. I drop the grub screws in the long grass and it all becomes a thing and I get cross and then, ugh. No. With this, you don't need a screwdriver. Little rubber cover, you pull it out the way. Drop out the battery caddy, change the batteries, pop it back, rubber cover, back in place, done. That's how batteries should be done. Thank you for listening, Chicken Guard. Thank you, because I didn't like it on your old unit. That's much better. The door. It's metal, it's geared, and it's locking. So for our American friends who are worried about things like raccoons with little paws that can get in, lift these sort of doors up, that ain't happening with this. So that, very good. On the bottom, pressure switch. A lot of people are worried that, particularly with a metal strong door, it can come down and it can crush a chicken that's lying in the doorway or hit a small chick and it will cause a problem. To make sure that this is suitably sensitive, I put a crystal brandy glass in the door and close the door on it. No harm done at all. If it's not going to hurt a crystal brandy glass, it ain't going to hurt a chicken. It sensed it, just moved back up out of the way. So that, again, good feature, well designed. The last thing I like, which is not necessarily absolutely unique, but unusual, is this ability to move the control panel outside of a run. It's not for everyone, it doesn't come configured that way, but it does come with the unit included that you can reconfigure it to have the control panel on a long wire outside the run. And for things like flock down, or if you're breeding, or if you're using a small run that you don't want to crawl into, that's very good. Okay, let's talk about things that I think you might need to be aware of if you're going to buy a unit like that. In fairness to Chicken Guard, some of the things that I've criticised them for in the past, like the fiddliness of the battery change, they've really addressed in that unit and they deserve credit for that. So fair play to them. The one thing I'm going to tell you to watch if this unit is what you want is check your measurements and check them carefully before you buy the unit. I think the width of that fits a notional sort of one foot 30 centimetre pot pole, but I would advise to go a bit careful with that. I would say 28 centimetres wide, 11 and a half inches, you know, 11, 11 and a half inches wide pot pole because you want some meat for your screws to be able to bite into. You don't want to be screwing right into the edge of the pot hole. And we have got some of our coops, we've got a wider pot hole than that. So this unit simply wouldn't be suitable for them. We've also got some units that have, for example, a vent up above where the pot hole goes. And that would actually get in the way of the door rising past the aperture and it would actually foul it and it would cause a malfunction. So you do need a relatively tall coop. You need it to have plenty of free space for that door to rise into. And you mustn't have too wide a pot pole. Check your measurements carefully. But that really is the one thing I would advise to be very sure of. Personally, I'd like to see the unit a little bit wider so it would fit a bigger range of wooden coops. That's our review of the all-in-one from Chicken Guard. It actually did surprise me just how good a unit that was and how many of the things that weren't quite right for us on previous units, that unit is correct. And even brought some clever things in, like having a remote control unit that you can operate from outside and run. Really like that functionality. I'm told there are even more things in the pipework, including an app that helps you know the status and control 
your opener and closer. Exactly what that app will do, I have no knowledge of yet, although I'm told I may be allowed to test it when it comes out. So that would be quite interesting. Uh, there's certain things that knowing in your app, so if your app told you, for example, the batteries want changing, that would be really, really handy for me, particularly when we have a number of units scattered around the garden. If you enjoyed today's video, can you spare us five seconds? Give us a thumbs up down below. If you've got any questions about auto openers and closers in general or any other aspect of our self-sufficient life, please leave it down in the comments and we'll try and either answer it or get back to you as soon as we can. And if you'd like to see all the other videos we make on our life here in the country, just tap on subscribe down there, hit the bell next to it, you'll hit every time we upload a new video, completely free service, at least you'll be in the know. For now, thanks for watching, come back and see us soon. Take care.